Welcome to our very first game of Kings of War Vanguard. This is the very first time we're playing this game uh, and we're very excited about it. So we are using a Vanguard FAQ that's part of our, our thing here and uh, the digital version, the free download of the core rules, that's what we are using in uh, this game. And of course, we've put together uh, some tokens and, and markers and all the stat cards for the two factions that we are using. And this is another view of the game setup with the table. It's kind of a marshland setup. And so the two armies are uh, Basilians versus the Trident Realm. We are using all the models in the starter boxes. Uh, no, no changes or anything. And this is just a view of the models. Uh, my commander is in the middle. He's the one with the big, big banner. So, uh, yep. And you do have uh, my sergeant who is holding that big spear and pointing it upward. And then uh, two crossbowmen and a man-at-arms with the shield and sword. And then the other part of the army uh, is my sisterhood. And we have the two uh, girls with the bows. They are the sister scouts. We have a veteran warrior sister. Um, she's holding a big flail. And then uh, the sister warrior with the sword. And of course, two panthers, which is great to have panthers. Why not? And the Trident Realm, and this is sort of the uh, command uh, section of the Trident Realm. There is a Centurion there, uh, the one with the big net. And then Lurkers, these are the ones with the Tridents and the Nets. And Julie just had to have the Otters, and okay, why not? And then there's a Thule uh, Mythican. Uh, it's the one in the middle. He's sort of a spellcaster. And two Thule Warriors. They're like octopus people. And then the Heart Piercers, which are the uh, Harpoon uh, Guns. You know, this is the ranged component of Trident Realms. And now the, uh, the setup again. Um, Again, uh, we use like a marshy setup. There are pools all over the uh, set a table, but uh, these pools are completely passable. We didn't do like any rough ground or anything for them because there was enough terrain and enough things uh, creating rough ground. So we let the pools be kind of normal. And uh, here is a the deployment for the Trident Realms. You see the Thule there on the left. And then uh, sort of the middle and left flank of the uh, Trident Realm deployment with all of the heart piercers in the left flank. We are playing um, Supply Grab. And uh, to capture an objective, the model has to be in base-to-base -base contact with it. No enemy models engaging it or in base-to-base -base contact with the objective. And there is the objective marker in the middle that sort of orange little circle you see on the hill. And uh, that one is worth three victory points uh, at the end of the game so to whoever is controlling it. And then uh, the little uh, blue markers on either side, on either flank of that middle marker, are worth two victory points. And then these are the dice, uh, the power dice, those little six-sided dice with the swords are power dice, and then eight-sided dice. You will need those to play this game. Uh, we also use a number of markers that I made myself and some little six-sided dice to keep track of wounds. And uh, these chips, uh, we're using them, uh, each color matches the power dice. We're using them because we only using one set of power dice. And uh, these, of course, you're going to need all of the um, stat cards for the models that you are using.
Okay, so the game has started and uh, the initiative roll and the uh, Trident Realm obviously gets initiative. Uh, this is the power roll for the Trident Realm and they, she gets uh, two power points. And so I roll my power roll and I got two uh, plus one red power point, uh, nothing in the white dice. So... And so um, this is to show the three points. Uh, I grabbed three little poker chips to indicate that. Okay, so uh, the first thing is the Trident Realm does a group uh, movement using one power point. And of course you can spend power throughout various things in the game. And they, they have just enough to get to the base of the hill. Uh, again, this is a group action. It is a long action, which means that that's it. Uh, she has no other actions to do. You can do one long action or two short actions uh, in your turn. And this is a special ability for the Basilians, uh, Iron Resolve. And Rising Tides is a special ability for the Trident Realm. These are all little things we had to kind of stop and, and look at and I'm sure we forgot a lot of these uh, you know we've probably made a lot of mistakes throughout this game and that's okay and here just measuring the rough terrain and uh, we decide here that yes one model can make it up the hill but of course that model is fatigued and it's the dude with the um, banner there and there's a little fatigue marker on him. So here's a view from uh, the Basilian's uh, point of view. And uh, well, they're seeing that hill is being occupied. And so uh, the first turn in any game, uh, first and even second turn, is all about moving and kind of positioning yourself. And that's really all that is going on in these images. You know, we're... It, the whole first uh, round, actually, was just all moving into position, advancing forward. Like you can see the heart piercers, uh, Julie pushes them forward and to try to get a better shooting uh, resolve. And again, this is the right flank of the Trident Realm. All of the uh, Thules are moving forward, and so are the Lurkers. Now, the Basilian left, which is just directly opposite the, her right flank, uh, we're also pushing forward. And this is the entire Trident Realm battle line. That's what we'll try to show with this picture. And uh, by the end of the first turn, we are finally um, at a point where we can start really uh, engaging each other. And here the Trident Realm unfortunately gets the first shot. They uh, check line of sight. And this is just a stat card to show the uh, range stat is 5 plus. They hit on 5 plus. And they use 2d8 dice for a, ra for, uh, a ranged attack. So now here just checking range for the Trident Realm. And yes, it, uh, 9 inch range. Perfectly in range, using one power as a group action to do uh, to get two shots. Basically, that's all that that uh, was in range. And w she had a bunch of dice here because of she added dice for um, the power roll. But not only that, you get extra dice when your line of sight is cleared. And the first casualty of the game was one of my crossbowmen. Now, on the left flank, um, things are starting to get messy. Mind you, this is all in the early second round of the game, and the Trident Realm has already positioned uh, the Centurion, the guy with the Trident, right near the uh, main objective. And so, uh, here on the uh, right flank of the Basilians, Things are starting to get messy. Um, I'm sending models that way to kind of 
uh, try and stop the advance of the heart piercers. Now, uh, here in the middle of the board, you see uh, one of the, um, the chaplain actually advancing forward towards the base of the hill to challenge the centurion. Uh, on the left flank, things start to explode again. Uh, one of the panthers attacks a lurker and they're here in melee combat. Um, here is just a view of an exploding eight, uh, you know, for the uh, for for the cat. Actually, that was one of the roles that the cat rolled. And um, here is the battle between Chaplin and the uh, Centurion. Uh, you know, the Chaplin manages to get up on that hill to challenge the Centurion. Uh, but one thing I did not really uh, take into account is, is those otters. Those otters have three wounds because they are a swarm. And uh, here my archers uh, wounded the centurion, but then the otters came down and bogged them down. Uh, here is a, a view again of the left flank. The left flank is just going crazy. Some of the Trident Realm troops have fallen uh, thanks to the exploding eights. Uh, so here are the casualties late in round three. It's only round three. It's going on round four, but already uh, three Basilians and two Lurkers. So uh, again, uh, the, the right flank was a little more complicated. I was trying to get those crossbowmen to fire. Um, and it's, the heart piercers were also firing. Um, and then by early round four... Things just became a mess. Um, the Trident Realm, Julie very smartly sent troops to bog me down. To keep me away from the objective. Uh, but my commander uh, fights through and uh, manages to uh, pierce the lines of the Trident Realm. Which by now uh, we're just fighting, uh, mainly fighting crazy here. And... Uh, here are the wounds and on the Basilian side, like all the little red dice represent wounds. Um, it, there was a lot of use of power in this game. Uh, it's a great resource, and this is early in the fifth round. So, uh, you know, you can imagine, early in the fifth round, and uh, the game is, we only played for five rounds, and so the game is about to end. And uh, here is uh, pretty much now uh, nearing the end of the game, and uh, the Trident Realm controls that red objective, the three victory points. These stupid little otters are, <laughs> they made me so mad, they just bogged down my archers, and I should have seen that coming, really. And then on the right flank, the whole mob of fighting continued. Uh, my commander manages to break through with a couple of other uh, defenders and we uh, contested the, the uh, objective. So fortunately, Trident Realm did not get those points. And here we control two victory points thanks to one of our Panthers who lo loyally stays by the objective. But unfortunately, Trident Realm does win a victory because uh, it controls three victory points. And that was it. A very short summary. Uh, we had to do, this game took longer than anticipated because, of course, we had to check the rules, uh, you know, and I had to get online once to kind of check out some stuff. Uh, but all in all, it, it wasn't a lot of, you know, uh, bogging down. I mean, the game... Is so full of action. It was it was a lot of fun. This game has a bit of a learning curve, but it's a lot of fun, and um, you know it. Things went fast. The action was furious, especially with melee. Um, the power resource is very very useful in the game. Uh, that's something we learned, and uh, Julie definitely took advantage of her power to add extra dice rolls to her ranged attacks to her melee attacks and I know we forgot stuff because we were so excited with like the melee uh, one thing I learned is that the trident realm 
Uh, they are fast. The regeneration ability of this lady here, the Centurion, uh, really kicks butt. And uh, her Battle Rage gives her an extra attack. So, great game. 